Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today it's just a real quick update on a mod that I've done before. Um, got the mod 007, now this is the already modded version, but basically I started out, um, this is a first revision mod 007 and they put out a few with a lot of good updates with each new revision. But I had the first version, which had some issues, and I was just never able to get it to sound as good as I would have liked to get it to sound. It actually, for a while, kind of turned me off on aluminum keyboards altogether. Um, one of the reasons was a, there was a lot of ringing. This was before, or may have been around the time that the Force Brick mod just started coming into um, the community, or at least the zeitgeist. But... I modded it a couple of times. I did uh, record the last time that I modded it, and it came out okay. Um, I did the Tempest tape and the PE foam mod, but like many of those, it kind of sounded similar to other keyboards. So it wasn't great. It was much better, but it wasn't great. And I never just, I've never decided to go ahead and purchase a new revision because it's like, oh, I'm just going to have the same keyboard. Anyway. Uh, fast forward to a couple of years and I was looking at the Akko site the other day and I came across a listing for an upgrade for the Mod 007, a flex cut upgrade. Now it's south facing and it didn't have any um, LEDs, RGBs on them, but it was fairly inexpensive and I was like, hmm, this sounds like something that may make the difference um, in the Mod 07 and I also had been thinking about for a little while about the pet mod um, and I was thinking that maybe it could make a difference with this so I was like hey kill, kill two birds with one stone I reached out to Akko they were kind enough to send me out uh, the PCB upgrade kit that basically uh, is just consists of the PCB as well as a daughter board replacement and I went to town I went ahead and opened up the existing one after taking off the caps and the switches I went ahead and detached the plate from the PCB and put the plate aside. Anyway, I got the new PCB. I went ahead and decided to do a Tempest tape mod on it. I did three layers, making sure to cut out for the JST connector. Now this, this is one of those thinner JST connectors and thankfully flipping it didn't cause any issues but uh, when I first reinstalled it I installed it facing down or at least the little windows into each of the pins was facing down and that was wrong they have to be facing up but thankfully I didn't short anything once I plugged it in the right way everything was good um, I went ahead and decided I was gonna stay with the PE foam that I'd already used and I cut out a piece of PET plastic for above the PCB, as well as a piece for below. I actually cut three different pieces for below. Um, I just made two strips on either end and used a little bit of uh, uh, the same grease that I use on stabilizers uh, to kind of make them stick to each other so they wouldn't just be sliding around. Um, on top of that, I put a very open cell foam, light open cell foam that came in one keyboard or another. I actually had to cut it down. It may have just been packing. But after doing that and putting the uh, PET film um, above the PCB with the PE film on top of that, I used some switches to keep everything in place while I used an X-Acto knife to cut out the holes for the center post. I then used a pair of tweezers to cut out the two holes on either side of the main post for five pin switches now it's my opinion that it's just best to get it out of the way even if you plan to only use three pin switches which i did in this build but for the future i won't have to worry about having to cut those or punch those holes out if i do want to upgrade to some five pin switches so while doing that i did notice that i had to put a little bit of extra support on the back of each um, hot swap socket when pushing in the switches as uh, because 
all of the flex cuts it makes each individual key a little bit more flexy than I'd like so I had to make sure from the back that there was enough pressure and of course because the switch is going through so much material to ensure that it went all the way through. Um, I went ahead and had to do a, a keyboard test while it was plugged in to make sure I had connection on all the switches. But once I went ahead and did that, I put the put the keyboard back together um, and I loaded it up with a set of Nautilus OEM double shot ABS keycaps that I've had for longer than I can remember. Um, all I know is they're ABS and they're OEM, uh, but I'm missing a few keys, which I had to replace with other ones. So it's kind of a, a, a blurst or cursed uh, keycap set, but it did the trick. When I started pushing on these keys, I was like, yes, I finally got this to sound. Not exactly as I expected, but so much better than it did when I originally got it. And this is how it turned out. Um, I actually found the arrow key between filming the sound test and <laughs> getting the uh, the video together. I actually found all the keys except for the F5. So I have a bastardized, or a, I have a lonely F5 somewhere around my office. Anyway, I was very um, pleased with the results. And I thought that turned out quite well and that that pinginess, um, I think I've gotten rid of for good. Now, when I originally did uh, the uh, last force break, I only did the tape on one side of the case. So this time I decided to do the force break on both the, on the half that I missed last time on the, on the top half. So that's probably making the difference. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and slice in a little bit of the sound test from my previous mod, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut to this one as I feel that it sounds much better. Uh, the only thing that I could say that <clears throat> would be a negative about this is that the original knob did not fit. I had to find another D knob. There was no way to fit the original knob onto the stem of the replacement keyboard. Uh, all my other knobs fit, so I don't know what the issue was and I didn't want to press so hard that I was going to break it, but I even tried it with it open so that I could support the back of the PCB and there were, it just it did not go to the point where it actually locked in. Just no matter what, it would just pop right off. If you flipped over the keyboard, it would fall. So I'm gonna reach out to Akko and see if there is a fix for it, maybe something I'm missing. Um, and if so, I will go ahead and make a quick video update in case anybody does decide to, um, to do this. But again, I was able to fit several different knobs on here without issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test of the pet modded updated mod 007. Um, if you guys have any questions, any comments, uh, please feel free to leave them below or jump over on Budget Keebs on Reddit, or you can even find me on the Discord server for Budget Keebs, discord.budgetkeebs.com. And uh, I'm usually on there. Do my best to answer questions whenever possible. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.